Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this video, we're going to talk about what a recursive sequence is and how to solve it. So what I've written here, this is called a recursive sequence. It's called that because we can find the next term in the sequence if we have the previous term. So here, the n plus 1 term, like the next term in the sequence, is given by square root of 20 plus the previous term. And we're given the first term, the first term being square root of 20. So if you wanted to list all the terms of this sequence, well, I have a1, a2, I just follow this pattern, a2 is 20 plus a1, and a1 is root 20. So the second term of the sequence would be root 20 plus root 20, uh, root 20 plus root 20. If I wanted the third term, it would be square root of 20 plus the second term. And I just found the second term to be this. It would be root 20 plus root 20. And you could continue on like this forever. And the question naturally is, does this sequence converge? And if it converges, what does it converge to? Now there's a very important theorem for sequences that says a bounded monotonic sequence always converges. So what do those two things mean? Bounded means that the sequence never exceeds an upper bound or a lower bound. Uh, so we really only care about bounded on one side. Basically, if a sequence is monotonic, that means it's always increasing or always decreasing. So think of it like this. If I'm always increasing, but I'm bounded above, I have to eventually kind of level off somewhere and that'll be my limit. If I'm always decreasing, but I'm bounded below, again, I'll always kind of level off somewhere, and that will be my limit. So that's our goal with this. We want to show that this sequence is both bounded, and in this case, going to be bounded above, and monotonic, in this case, always increasing. So the way that we do this, or one thing that you could do, just to get an idea of what's going on, is start plugging in those values I was writing into a calculator. And what you would find if you start plugging those values into a calculator, I'm not going to do it for time's sake, but you would see that those numbers are going to get closer and closer to 5. They're going to be eventually like 4.99 something. So that's suggestive to say that this sequence is bounded above by 5. And let's just kind of uh, assume that. It's, it's true certainly here, square root of 20 is less than 5. And actually what I'm going to do here is a proof by mathematical induction. I'm not going to go into all the details with it, but the way you do it is you find what's called a base case. That's my base case. In this case, it's the first term. And then I assume that's true for the nth term or the kth term. So I'll just assume that a sub n is bounded by 5. And then what I have to show is that the a sub n plus 1 term is bounded by 5. Well, here's the a sub n plus 1 term. I know that that's equal to 20 plus a sub n square rooted. And my assumption is that a sub n is less than 5. So this is less than square root of 20 plus 5, right? If I just replace the a sub n with 5. Well, this would just be root 25, which is 5. Hey, what did I just show? I just showed that a sub n plus 1 is less than 5. So this actually proves it by mathematical induction. It's a quick mathematical induction proof if you've ever seen one. Um, but don't worry about the details too much. Basically, all I've done here is shown that for every term in my sequence, it's bounded above by 5. So that's one half of the things I have to do. The other thing is to show that my sequence is monotonic. In this case, I want to show it's always increasing. One way to do that is to take the difference of two of the terms and show that it's always positive, right? If I subtract two things, uh, the latter and the former, and that's positive, that would show an increase each term. So let's do that. So like I said, I'm gonna take the n plus one term and I'm gonna subtract it by the a sub n term, and I'm hoping that this eventually is going to be bigger than zero. That would mean that the sequence is always decreasing because this would imply that a sub n plus one is always bigger than a sub n. Let me show you what I mean. 
Now I'm actually gonna do a little trick just because this is square roots. I'm gonna do it with the squares. It's often easier to work not with square roots. So I'm gonna work with the squares of these things and hope that this works out. So I'm just gonna work with the squares of these things. Well, a sub n plus one squared, here's a sub n plus one. It would just be 20 plus a sub n. And then I have minus a sub n squared. So I think this, I think this factors into five minus a sub n times four plus a sub n. And now it remains to see, is this always greater than zero? Well, every term is square rooted, right? So every term is going to be positive. So certainly this piece is always at least bigger than zero. What about this term? Is this term always positive? Well, every a sub n term is less than five. If every a sub n term is less than five, then this term has to be positive because it would be five minus something less than five. Both of these factors are positive. Therefore, overall, this is positive. And if this inequality is true, this would mean that a sub n plus one squared is greater than or equal to a sub n squared or that a sub n plus one is greater than a sub n. And this shows that this function is always increasing, it's monotonic. Okay, I've shown the two things that I needed to show. I needed to show it was bounded. Every term is bounded above by five. And I needed to show the sequence was monotonic. In this case, it's always increasing. A bounded monotonic sequence always converges. And if it converges and it's a recursive thing, I can find its limit. And this is the cool way to do it. So I'll just simply take the limit of both sides. I'll take the limit as n goes to infinity on both sides of my equation. And I don't know what exactly the limit is yet. I'll just call it L. So the limit of a sub n plus one, I'll call that L. And here, well, a sub n, it tends to the same place as a sub n plus one tends to. They're the same sequence really, just shifted by a term. At infinity, the difference is negligible. They're both going to the same place. So this a sub n is going to this same L. And now I simply have an equation, in fact, a quadratic equation, I can just solve for L. So I'll just square both sides. And then I think I'll move everything to one side. This will factor, right? I think um, minus five, and L plus four, meaning that L is five or negative four. Well, every term in the sequence was positive, so the limit definitely can't be four. Hey, that means the limit had better be five, which makes a lot of sense since we said it was bounded above by five and the sequence is always increasing. That means at infinity, the sequence should be tending to that upper bound. So this was kind of a lengthy video. There were a lot of parts involved. We actually used a little proof by mathematical induction. And then we did some fancy algebra to show that this sequence was always increasing. Then finally, we just took the limit of both sides and solved a quadratic equation. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. You can leave a comment below telling me what you think and have a great day.